Good evening, I'm Ted Koppel, and this is Nightline. We'll go live to the Texas Gulf Coast tonight as we look at the effects of Hurricane Gilbert on the U.S. mainland. It was awful, terrible. I have never in my life been through what we went through these past three days. And we'll talk live with American tourists who returned to the U.S. late today after facing the full fury of the hurricane in Cancun on the Yucatan Peninsula. This is ABC News Nightline. Reporting from Washington, Ted Koppel. In Jamaica and Haiti, in the Dominican Republic and Honduras, in the Cayman Islands and now in Mexico, Hurricane Gilbert has killed and flooded, leveled and destroyed. An estimated 66 people dead, 10 others missing. Damage in the billions of dollars. As for the United States, parts of Texas have been battered, but the storm came ashore further south than expected, sweeping across largely unpopulated areas of Mexico today. Texas was hit by heavy winds and torrential rain, but not as severely as expected. Nevertheless, Gilbert is still huge and dangerous, spinning off tornadoes and dropping enormous amounts of rain. We wanted to begin by giving you some notion of what lies ahead and where. Here's ABC's Mark Potter. As Hurricane Gilbert moves inland, forecasters predict it will steadily lose strength and soon will no longer be a hurricane. So we expect that perhaps all night tonight we'll keep the hurricane warnings up until they wind down. Perhaps tropical storm force winds tomorrow. But even as a tropical storm, Gilbert will dump heavy rains on northeastern Mexico. Then forecasters say in a day or two, the heavy rains will probably move northward into west central Texas. Finally, as the storm continues to wind down, it could follow the path of other hurricanes and move through Oklahoma and actually help out the Ohio Valley states. The main beneficial impact would be, again, to bring some additional much-needed rainfall, perhaps, into the drought areas. But tonight, at the National Hurricane Center in Coral Gables, there is concern for Monterey, Mexico, where torrential rains are expected to hit the heavily populated mountains. You get more rainfall on the slopes of the mountains than you otherwise would over flat land. And I think that that will t cause mudslides uh, where you have steep slopes and, uh, and local flooding. In Texas, there are also fears that Gilbert will spawn tornadoes and cause heavy flooding. Flooding, yes. Texas is notorious for floods from uh, tropical storms. They've set some of the records for rainfall over there. Forecasters admit they are uncomfortable predicting too far ahead because past hurricanes have surprised them. In 1969, Hurricane Camille, which was much smaller than Gilbert, came ashore in Mississippi, then unexpectedly poured heavy rains on Virginia's Appalachian Mountains, killing more than 100 people. So while forecasters here are breathing a little easier now that Hurricane Gilbert is ashore, they don't want people in its path to become complacent. Already this storm has done a lot of damage, and it's not over yet. For Nightline, this is Mark Potter in Miami. The director of the National Hurricane Center, Dr. Robert Sheets, is with us now from the National Hurricane Center in Miami. Time for you to sort of pack it up. Can you go home, go to sleep tonight? Hopefully so, yes. <laughs> Where, where is the storm exactly now? And, and uh, just give us sort of the nightly update, the scope, the size, the speed. Okay, it's starting to weaken at this hour. It's, uh, of course, well inland as far as uh, on the north part of Mexico, uh, moving towards the west-northwest. We're still waiting for that northwest turn that we've been predicting for a long time. It's uh, probably going to reduce below hurricane strength within oh, about six hours or so and below tropical storm strength within about 24 hours. Now, it's coming up against a mountain range there somewhere in, in Mexico, isn't it? What happens when it hits those mountains? Well, it's over the hill country there, and they get about 20 inches of range, what we're estimating in that hill country. And so, indeed, we can get some uh, floods as a result of that. We've already had reports of uh, tornadoes down there in the southeast Texas area. So we expect it to turn up over the middle part of Texas here, here uh, tomorrow and the next day, and perhaps up over Oklahoma, as, as uh, Mr. Potter indicated. Now, as Mark Potter was saying, eventually it might even make it up into the Ohio Valley. Again, going back to Camille uh, 19 years ago, uh, it still packed quite a punch when she came up here into this area. Is it going to make it that far into the Ohio Valley and then up, up the uh, Atlantic coast? 
I think so. The question is how much is going to be with it. It's going to merge with some other system coming across in the middle part of the country, and, and the problem there is how much rainfall it's going to be pumping up from the Gulf of Mexico. What is it, Bob, that causes a storm that, that at one point seemed to be heading north and starts to head west? Then, I mean, A, how are you able to, and you've been doing very well, uh, it, it hit a little further south than you had predicted, but other than that, you've been pretty much on the mark. How are you able to determine what kind of a path an erratic storm like that will take? Well, we get a lot of help. We have a lot of friends that give us big numerical models out there and get some idea of what's going on in the atmosphere around the hurricane. And then we have our own models, and then we try to use our, our experience. And we've been fortunate in this particular hurricane up until about the time that it moved in the inland here at the over northern part of uh, Mexico. And we were off to the right of that. And of course, it's best for us that it was off to the left. What is, uh, I, I don't recall whether you told me what the size of the storm is tonight. Is it still the same huge storm that it was yesterday and the day before? The circulation, the overall circulation, yes, very much so. The winds were still about 200 miles out as far as uh, almost hurricane force winds, the diameter of that. Now that's going to be shrinking here markedly as, now that it's over the, over the land. What about the size of the eye? Is that gray patch in the middle, is that the eye? That's the eye. It's starting to fill in, and that will fill in during the night and just start to uh, uh, weaken there. All right, Bob Sheets, I'll tell you what, we're going to come back to you a little bit later together with the mayor yeah. of Brownsville. When we come back, we'll be joined, as I say, by one of the people who's been depending on the information coming out of the National Hurricane Center to make his own key decisions, the mayor of Brownsville, Texas, Ignacio Garza. This is ABC News Nightline, brought to you by Vaseline Intensive Care Hand and Nail Formula Lotion. Finally, equal treatment for hands and nails. Introducing new Vaseline Intensive Care Hand and Nail Formula Lotion to soften rough, dry hands and help strengthen nails with moisturizers for your hands and keratin, the protein found in healthy nails. New Hand and Nail Formula from the makers of Vaseline Intensive Care because we believe in equal treatment for hands and nails. Here at the corner of Albany Street, where no the vegetables, huh? No topping. The American Dietetic Association says vegetables are an important part of a balanced diet. The city fathers, in a combined effort, no to salad. Say, oh, too busy. You need a V8. When you can't get to eat vegetables, you can drink them. One delicious glass of V8 juice provides a serving of vegetables. Didn't drink your V8, did you, Frank? Drink V8. Keep your diet straight. The new kid is such a fair dealer that he'll even guarantee your satisfaction at Colorado Chrysler and Aurora. Really, choose any new car. If you're not completely satisfied, bring it back within 30 days for a full exchange privilege. Also, get great closeout deals like 47 LeBarons from $98.88 or only $179 a month. $3,000 cash rebates on popular Voyagers and even hot LeBaron convertibles. Hey, it pays for the new kid to keep you a happy camper at Colorado Chrysler Plymouth. On Havana at Alameda in Aurora. Colorado's Chrysler Store guaranteeing your satisfaction. This is final. Final. Name final. your own price. It's the final days for Grand Trees Denver, Lakewood, and Colorado Springs retail sales stores. And we must. I repeat. We must. Must liquidate over $1 million in new home furnishings. So come name your own price. No reasonable offer will be refused. Name your own price. On sofas. Living rooms. Bedrooms. Dining rooms. Mattress sets. Name your own price. This is it. Only a few days left. Everything must go now regardless of price. Name your own price. At the Grand Tree retail sales stores. The end is here. Sunday on This Week with David Brinkley, Bill Bradley, Henry Kissinger, and other prominent Democrats and Republicans debate the issues of the 88 vote. Sunday. Throughout Texas these past few days, mayors, disaster coordinators, and other local officials have had to make decisions that could mean life or death for people living in their communities and could affect millions of dollars worth of property. For the most part, they've made those decisions based on forecasts coming from the National Hurricane Center in Miami, so we thought it would be a great idea to bring together one of those officials, the mayor of Brownsville, Ignacio Garza Jr., and the director of the Hurricane Center, Robert Sweets. Mayor Garza, I hope, is going to join us live now from the Brownsville Civic Center. We have been having tremendous uh, technical problems, which you can understand if you can just see the water gushing down behind the mayor there. Mayor Garza, can you hear me all right? Yes, I sure can, Ted. All right. Uh, expect that we may have interruptions simply because the bad weather is, is not doing great things for our signal here. Bring us up to date on, on how things are in Brownsville. 
At this present time, you can see behind me, we're having a strong gust of wind and a lot of rain. This is something the Weather Bureau has been telling us to expect with Hurricane Gilbert throughout the night. Uh, as sheets of water, as uh, systems come in off the Gulf, we'll have uh, intermittent high uh, winds and rain, and we're going through one of those periods right now. Tell me about the decision-making process that you went through over the last couple of days. Did you order evacuation or recommend evacuation, or what did you do with your folk down there? We began preparing for Hurricane Gilbert back on Tuesday as it began looking like it was coming our way, tracking it through the Weather Service and the Weather Bureau and the National Hurricane Center. The ultimate decisions were when would it hit, when should we open shelters, how soon should we start getting people into shelters. We did that based on the reports out of Miami and working with the local Weather Bureau and the service here in Brownsville. Now, you've got Bob Sheets, as you know, if you were able to listen to the top part of the program, Bob Sheets is with us. He's the director of the uh, Hurricane Center in Miami. Uh, this might be a good time. Uh, are you a satisfied customer? Yeah, we are. We uh, The uh, turn to the north that they predicted did not happen. We didn't wish the hurricane on anybody else, but we're glad it didn't come uh, as far north as they had initially predicted. Now, this is one of those times, and I, I, I don't mean to start anything between the two of you. I, I really mean in terms of uh, you are never going to be more conscious of what kinds of information you need and how quickly you need it than you are at a time like this. So talk to Dr. Sheets for a moment. What is it that they can do for you down at the Hurricane Center uh, to improve upon whatever service they've been giving the nation as a whole and you folks in particular? I think we've been pleased with the information they've been giving us and then based on what they've been saying in Miami and the availability of our local weather bureau the fact that once our local weather bureau could pick up the storm on their local radar then we could see exactly what was coming our way so we've been very satisfied with the information we've gotten out of miami and out of the weather bureau here in brownsville bob sheets you must be terribly conscious of the fact that men and women uh, like mayor gaza are making decisions which if they're if they're overly cautious could cost i mean waste millions and millions of dollars and if they're not cautious enough could cost lives how do you make your recommendations then? Well, our forecast is based on as far as the warnings are concerned. And in this case, as a good example, we have to consider the community being involved. We have to consider the size of the hurricane, a very large hurricane. So we put up a hurricane watch and a hurricane warning earlier than we normally would for a hurricane as it approached that coast. And indeed, I think that we did provide a, an adequate warning uh, for lead time for the area of Brownsville. Now, obviously, when you do interviews like this and you've done probably hundreds of them over the last few days, but certainly scores of them. Uh, you are informing everyone in kind of a general fashion. Right. Can someone like Mayor Gaza pick up the phone and call someone at the National Hurricane Center and get more specific information if he wants it? As soon as he can get through, that's one of the problems, limitations of the line. But we have an excellent system set up through the National Warning System. It's the uh, hotline system that we can actually talk to all officials down through the state of Texas. Some people are not on that yet, and I don't believe that Mayor Garza is on that, but that's the National Warning System. We can pick it up and we can talk to all local officials down through the state. So we do that quite frequently. Mr. Mayor, is that a, is that a function of cost? Is that why you're not on that system? No, I, I think part of the, the reason we're not on that system is that we're very satisfied with the information we get out of the local Weather Bureau who gets all their information through Miami. So working through their information here locally and the information they're provided from Miami and what we see through the media, we're very satisfied with the information that we've gotten and have gotten in the past and have gotten with Hurricane Gilbert. Just tell me now about the citizens of Brownsville. Where are they tonight? Did, did many of them evacuate? Uh, it's un impossible for us to know exactly how many people left uh, the city of Brownsville moving inland towards San Antonio, Austin, Laredo. We have had over 7,000 people in shelters last night. Today we found, as people thought the storm had moved in south of us, they started thinking the danger is over, we can go home. We've been urging them to stay in the shelters tonight. As you can see behind me right now, the wind is blowing, the wind is falling. It's still not safe for them, so we would rather they stay here and ride it out with us in our shelters uh, before trying to go home too early. And what's the forecast? What's the local forecast as you hear it there tonight? What's, uh, what do you expect for tonight and tomorrow morning? We could, we could expect this type of condition with these uh, gale force winds and the rain coming off the Gulf of Mexico through tonight and into early morning tomorrow. Uh, the storm is dissipating, as Dr. Sheets was saying, as Bob Sheets was saying. 
but we're also concerned about flooding from heavy rains. We're concerned about the threat of tornadoes. We had some small tornadoes spotted in the city today. One did some minor damage at an apartment complex. So we're still concerned about all those things happening, and we want to get through tonight and early into tomorrow morning to evaluate the situation then. Bob Sheets, how much longer before they don't have to worry about the tornadoes and any after effect of the storm? Well, it's going to be at least 24 hours before the system completely moves out of the area. I'm pleased to hear the uh, comments that the mayor's making because, indeed, that is exactly the message that we've been trying to get across, and, and I think that uh, it's worked very well. Well, nothing could please us more than that Brownsville has not been hit that hard. Uh, we had the, uh, the mayor as a guest on Nightline a, a few months ago when there was another disaster in Brownsville. The mayor and I were just saying next time you come on it's going to be for some good reason. But thank you very much for joining us, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. When we come back, a report on how one Texas family rode out the hurricane, and we'll talk with two Americans just back tonight from the hurricane-ravaged Mexican resort city of Cancun. How can you improve something this great, like Thompson's water seal? Well, Thompson's could apply itself or keep any rain from hitting your house. Instead, we've made it waterproof better. Introducing new and improved Thompson's water seal. 50% more active ingredients now protect wood, brick, and concrete from water damage with a lot more waterproofing power. So if you thought Thompson's couldn't be improved, we proved it could be. Thompson's, the first name in lasting protection. Our plan is to get phones everywhere, even here. Somewhere over the rainbow. The system is great. We can talk to computers anywhere. At AT&T, we've always been committed to helping the people of the world communicate better. Funny how the future seems to repeat itself. Yes, we can put all this knowledge into everybody's home or office at the push of a button. And the dreams that you dare to dream really do come true. is more for your fabric dollar. This week, free fabric. Buy two yards of chalet, calico, or selected jersey knits and suede cloth. Get the third yard free. Cloth World has, Cloth World is a whole lot more than a fabric store. Ask yourself this. Does your bakery bake with ingredients as fine as these? Kraft cheese. Chiquita bananas. Smucker's Jam. At Entenmann's, we make our full line of fresh baked goods with the same fine ingredients you use when you bake. And that's why you can't get better fresh baked goods than Entenmann's. Unless you bake. Ha 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 Tynan's is the only Metro car dealer that guarantees the lowest car prices and the lowest car payments. That's right. On every new Nissan, Volkswagen, and Isuzu, Tynan's will guarantee the lowest price and guarantee the lowest payment. No ifs, ands, or buts. Tynan's will save you more money. And Tynan's loves to say yes to anyone with credit problems. Lowest prices, lowest payments, and no problems with credit. Only at Tynan's, 700 South Havana. Ha 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 Tynan's. That's one small step for man. Conquering outer space. Years ago, America set out to be the best. Instead, the Soviets are making the great strides. Now, find out what went wrong and if we'll ever regain the edge. Watch an ABC News close-up with Lynn Sher. Beyond the Shuttle, Sunday. An, es an estimated 350,000 Gulf Coast residents fled their homes in advance of Hurricane Gilbert, but ultimately, it was up to each family to make its own decision on whether to go or stay. ABC's Rebecca Chase spent the day with one family, the Corrigans, in Corpus Christi. The day had a cloudy and uncertain beginning. Apparently, tide levels are about four feet above normal. But most of Corpus Christi had decided to tough it out. We were going to leave until we found out that it wasn't going to blow quite as hard as we thought it was. That's right. The Corrigan home was battened down and boarded up. It looks like they're going to hold up all right. The dogs appear to be okay. Everything's all right. Now we just wait and see. For Bob and Susan Corrigan and their two children, the storm watch began early in the day. Take over, make some more northward turns. Landfall could be further up to 
Texas coast. What are you all going to do today? Is he going to try to go over the island? While Bob checked with neighbors, yeah. Susan tracked Hurricane Gilbert. The center of Hurricane Gilbert was located near latitude 23.8 north. Getting closer. Area. I'm not worried about the house or any of the windows or, you know, the house is fine, but the roof might go. By midday, there was a break in the rain and a break for the family. Like hundreds of others, the Corrigans went to the bayfront to see the sights. Well, there's an awful lot of large rocks down there. He loses it. He gets to get himself hurt. That guy's crazy. For all the sightseers, it might have been a Sunday afternoon along the shore, except the water was rising and the wind was warning. Late in the day, Hurricane Gilbert finally came ashore. But with the eye of the storm nearly 300 miles south of Corpus Christi, winds gusted to only 55 miles per hour, and only two to three inches of rain fell. At first, I thought it was gonna it was gonna lightning, and our and we're gonna, we were gonna have to leave. But then it started going, it started getting littler and littler. So we did, so it didn't start. Get, so I didn't start getting real scared. I kept on thinking after seeing all those reporters down there that it was really going to come bad with all the trucks down there. But then after, I guess, after today, it just rained a little bit. In fact, we've had a lot of big thunderstorms here. They're a lot worse than this. With no damage to their house, the Corrigans were relieved, but admitted they thought the storm was a letdown. But I think everybody's a little bit disappointed that there wasn't a little more excitement. So Bob cooked a big kettle of chili and invited in the neighbors. And to make the hurricane party complete, Gilbert came knocking at the door. There really is running hard out here. This is Rebecca Chase for Nightline in Corpus Christi. It was a more powerful and more deadly hurricane, Gilbert, that slammed into the Yucatan Peninsula, the most eastern part of Mexico, two days ago. Among those caught in that onslaught were several thousand tourists in the popular beach resort town of Cancun. Some of those tourists arrived back in the United States tonight, flying into New Orleans. With us now, from our New Orleans affiliate, WVUE, is Pamela Caldwell, a sales representative from Los Angeles, who was vacationing at the Club Med in Cancun, and Michael Jones, a computer designer from Phoenix, who was also at the Club Med. Mr. Jones, uh, how bad was it? It was very bad, Ted. Um, there were uh, very, very, very high winds and a lot of damage to all the buildings. And um, uh, all the locals had uh, basically lost everything they had. Did you actually stay, Ms. Caldwell, at the, the Club Med Hotel, or did they, they pack you out of there? Oh, no. They, they had us evacuate um, Tuesday afternoon. And they put us up in the American, I guess it's the Americana, the hotel there. And it was um, one of the, I guess it would be an auditorium room, and they all had us stay in this room during the hurricane. And there were about 500 of us in this one room. Now, I've, it, I've read a little bit of wire copy on what it was like in that, in that ballroom or whatever, whatever it was. Apparently, uh, there wasn't too much food, and, and by the end, there wasn't even that much water. Um, this is true, but I felt that they really did take care of us. We did have enough water. We did get enough food. And I heard of some other people that were not taken care of quite as well as we were. So I felt pretty lucky. Well, tell me one of those stories. Like, like what? Um, I just heard of some people that were apparently left stranded during the hurricane in an area that wasn't too safe. I guess it was a school stairwell or something. And apparently just left there. And for 24 hours, these people were without food and water and no contact at all and had to walk 15 miles as soon as the storm had stopped to get back to wherever they were, you know, their hotel was. Mr. Jones, when, so. they, when they took you back to the, the Club Med to pick up whatever bags you had left behind there, just describe for me the conditions. And I think, I, I don't know that we have pictures of the Club Med area, but we're going to run a little bit of video of what it was like there in Mexico while you were talking. What did you find when you got back? The, uh, the beaches that were very sandy were gone. All the sand was up inside Club Med. The pool was full of sand, eight feet. And there were all the buildings, the windows were blown out. Um, and there was a three-story building. All the bungalows are three stories. And then the top of the building, inside one of the rooms, there was sand that was six foot deep. So the waves had to be probably 30, 40 feet. 
at the worst part of the, the storm. Are you, are you aware of, uh, I mean, obviously the property damage was terrible, but what about, uh, what about humanity? What happened to people down there? Uh, I heard of nobody who lost their life uh, anywhere within the news that we could hear. Um, the, uh, total, the total damage is this. There were a lot of locals around that were coming around trying to recover. They totally lost their businesses and they were selling whatever they could, uh, candy bars, cigarettes, whatever, just to get back on their feet because they lost everything they had. Well, listen, I thank both of you for coming in tonight. Clearly, you need a vacation from your vacation, and I hope you, yes. I hope you have one soon, and welcome back home. Thank, thank you. you. When we come back, we'll get an update on Hurricane Gilbert from the director of the National Hurricane Center, Dr. Robert Sheets. Oh. Grapefruit juice? No, Ocean Spray Pink Grapefruit Juice Cocktail. It's not what you think. It's not bitter. Ah, uh, sweeter. It's all yours. <laughs> Ocean Spray Pink. Apples have always been tempting, but never as tempting as this. Who could resist chunks of cinnamon sweet apples sitting on a puff of pastry swirled with icing? New apple sweet roll from Weight Watchers. Irresistible. The officers and staff of Royal Caribbean Cruise Line invite you to join them for seven days of absolute perfection. RSVP, your local travel agent. Don't just cruise the Caribbean, cruise the Royal Caribbean. Morning. What, no kiss? Oh, sorry. Lips that touch sugar and preservatives will never touch mine. Okay. No. Oh, I want real commitment. Nutri-Grain? Mm -hmm. New Kellogg's Nutri-Grain Biscuits. Biscuits? Think positive. Oh, no sugar added. No salt, no preservatives. I'm positive I'm gonna hate this. Introducing the only shredded wheat with no preservatives. Nutri-Grain Biscuits. Mm. Okay. Mm. Now let's talk commitment. New Nutri-Grain Biscuits. <laughs> This is a test of the Jeopardy broadcast system. This station is conducting a test of your skill at Jeopardy. This is only a test. The category, television. This talk show host was once Miss Black Tennessee. Good luck. This was only a test, but if you said, who is Oprah Winfrey, you're ready for an actual Jeopardy game and are advised to tune to this station. Test yourself with Jeopardy following Oprah on Channel 9. Now back to regular programming. Dr. Robert Sheets is with us again now from the National Hurricane Center in Miami. Bob, I think you've told us pretty much what you can about the storm. I just want to, in this last minute that we have, hear a little about you. Uh, before you, your predecessor, Dr. Neil Frank, he, uh, he actually rode off to fame and fortune and is now working where? Somewhere in Texas, isn't he? As a, yes, as a... he found out where the money was. It's in television. He's in Houston. Yeah. Now, what about, <laughs> what about you? What, is this, what has this done to you? I mean, this is an extraordinary thing, isn't it, when all of a sudden one television station, one network after another, you become, I mean, you really are in the eye of the hurricane, aren't you? Well, it's uh, the position. It's not the person is uh, uh, here, and indeed the director of the National Hurricane Center has a d great deal of responsibility, and it's really the position and not the person. Have you been enjoying it, though? I've enjoyed it, yes, very much so. I enjoyed the position even without this aspect of it. <laughs> All right, well, you have done, uh, you, you have uh, more than filled Neil Frank's shoes, and uh, we've enjoyed having you on. And I hope it's a while before we have to talk to you again, but we'd like to talk to you at any time. I, I hope so, too, Dan. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. The topic on This Week with David Brinkley this Sunday is the 88 vote, debating the issues. That's our report for tonight. I'm Ted Koppel in Washington. For all of us here at ABC News, good night. This has been Nightline. For a printed transcript of this or any Nightline broadcast, please send $3 to 267 Broadway, New York, New York, one triple zero seven. Nightline is a presentation of ABC News.